Hello everyone, welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing the Alec Bradley Nika Puro. This is, uh, as the uh, name would imply, an all Nicaraguan cigar, wrapper, binder, filler, and uh, made in Nicaragua. This is the Robusto size. Um, I picked this up at my local tobacconist uh, for uh, $7.35. Um, is the uh, suggested retail price, but I did get this uh, as part of a, a package deal where I uh, you buy two Alec Bradleys, a third would be free, and um, so that's what it was. Um, this was part of that, that package deal. Um, so without any further ado, we will get this out of the cellophane. Ooh, smells good. Lots of hay. Fresh tobacco. A little bit of spice on there. Okay. Some kitchen spices. Hint of leather. Maybe some bread dough. Okay. Very dark wrapper. Kind of, um, kind of like a matte finish. It's, uh, it's dark. It's, it's not shiny at all. There's really no sheen to it. Um, but it, it doesn't feel dried up by, by any means. Uh, it, it feels more like a, uh, like an unpolished leather, but very supple. Um, a little bit of give to the, uh, to the pack. It's got a pretty good weight to it. Very dark, uh, near black, very dark espresso color. Right away I can tell that the label is applied nicely. It's, it's loose, I can feel it, you know, it moves around on there, so there shouldn't be any worry about it damaging the cigar when I remove it. This has a, let's see, double, maybe a triple cap? No, I think maybe just double cap on there. Uh, looks a little rough, honestly. There's um, there's some uh, some veins, no big deal. But there's a couple places where uh, or where the leaf looked like it'd been uh, stretched and bunched, kind of uh, oddly, and you know, no big deal. Just uh, not as pretty as, as some others I've seen. But uh, it is what it is. I'm looking at this label. I think there's actually two labels. There are two labels on here. They've managed to slide together or they've put a dab of glue on it, but it's actually two separate labels. Anyway, we'll get to that point when it's time to remove it. Anywho. Using my trusty Zycar today. Zycar cutter. Well, I've got a problem that I'm going to have to work on. My Zycar won't open back up. I think I may have some uh, tobacco leaf stuck between the blades that's holding it together. There we go. You see me there, maybe a little bit there. I'm going to have to give it a good cleaning, I think. Be very cautious with these air. Extremely sharp, yeah, still not coming open. Okay, but I will mess with that at uh, some other time. Pretty light draw. Some interesting flavors. There's, um, what's that? It's 
It's a very dark flavor. A little bit of coffee in there. There's something else there. I'm not sure what it is. Some kitchen spices. A little bit of leather. Subtle hint of leather. There's still something else in there. I'm not quite sure what it is. Toast it up. My Alec Bradley tea kettle, as I call it. thought about using a cedar spill and being indoors I can do that. Cedar spills don't work too well outside. They're very sensitive to the wind as is this little tea kettle lighter. But I forgot I was going to do that and since I've just about got it lit, I'm no point in getting the cedar spills out now. There we have it. Right off the bat, you get that initial blast of pepper on the retro pail. The smoke has a uh, almost a uh, pre-smoked character to it, almost like you've uh, put it out and then went back and took a draw on it after you had put it out and you're getting all that burnt, spent uh, tobacco and ash and different flavors like that. There's a little bit of that going on. Not bad. It's not, you know, not in a bad way, but it's definitely something I don't normally pick up from a cigar. Okay, that's starting to go away. That pepper is still there, very strong on the pepper. All right, real strong on that pepper. I'll get somewhere in the first third and I'll be back. Preparing today's cigar with um, Paul Jones. It's an American blended whiskey. Um, I sampled this for the first time a few days ago. And, uh, that was actually halfway decent, especially at about seven and a half dollars for a seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle. It's uh, being discontinued at my local ABC store, so I got it for a little bit of a sale. Now, as I mentioned, I I did open this up a few days ago, so with the influx of some oxygen into it, it's definitely changed. Now I've gone ahead and. I've poured a dram and I've added about a teaspoon of water. This is at 40, see it's 86 proof, so it's 43% alcohol. Something new I'm picking up on the nose that I didn't when I first sampled it. Some definite melon. Like, like the whole melon, you know, with the rind on it and everything. You just, when you're looking for a nice ripe melon at the grocery store and you kind of give a little squeeze and you kind of smell it, that's what I'm smelling. Smelling melon. <laughs> I'm an idiot. A little bit of leather on the on the arrival. A little bit of creamy mouth feel with a subtle hint of a bourbony sweetness on the finish. Now this isn't sweet like, like a typical bourbon would be, but it does have some of the characteristics of a, of a bourbon. 
I kind of smell the, the bourbon in there now as well, the, the sweetness that a, a bourbon would have. But this is definitely a much drier whiskey. I did a little research on this. I didn't get too in depth on it, but I was able to track or to trace back Paul Jones um, to its lineage and its relationship with Four Roses. Um, it says it was uh, blended and bottled by Paul Jones Distilling Company, Bardstown, Kentucky. Um, now, what I did find out is that it. Uh, it is. Uh, it, it it has some ties to the Four Roses uh, whiskey. So um, if that's any uh, indication of, of what you might pick up in this. Uh, I have not had the Four Roses yet, um, so uh, I, I couldn't say if um, there are any similarities or not. But um, something to think about. Let's get back to the cigar review. Here I am, about 20 minutes in. Uh, I, I did have to go ahead and touch it up. It was burning a little uneven. Um, so uh, I touched it up and then uh, I set it down and I was talking about the whiskey for a moment there. And when I picked it back up, it was trying to go out. So I touched it up again and then a little bit of that loose flaky ash fell off. So, um, and I can see, I don't know if you can see it on there, It's it's got Got a nice wormhole or a, a, a nice tunnel going on in there. So we'll have to see what happens. The draw is fine. Although the smoke is becoming a little thin now, I may have to do a little more touching up here. Let's see what we got. That's better. Much better smoke output. Also, I mentioned the, the bands were plenty loose on there. Um, and I've managed to get the two separated. And it's pretty interesting. The lower band uh, has some documentation on it about, about the cigar. Um, some of it's covered up as, as it's, you know, as it folds over itself, but um, can't see what all it says. Something, the Pavia de Esteli, Pan American, Nicaragua, one slash 13 degrees, five minutes north, 86 degrees, 20 minutes west, 21 minutes west. Um, so uh, I'm assuming that's giving the, uh, the coordinates of uh, either the manufacturing plant itself or, or maybe um, where the leaves were sourced at, that I don't know. Might be worth checking into. But uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. This is the first time I've ever seen that type of information on a cigar band. So that's uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that, that tunnel is pretty deep and the smoke's getting thin again. It's mellowed out a little bit. That pepper note is greatly diminished. Smoke is a little dry. From time to time, I do pick up that, that pre-burned tobacco note, but um, even that is it's dwindling down quite a bit. Uh, Oh, it's kind of strange. I've never never had that in a cigar before. I think I'm going to have burn issues with this. I can see that this tunnel, I mean, it's in there. It's deep, and uh, I am. I'm, the smoke is continuing to get thinner and thinner with each draw. So I'm probably going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to mine this cigar constantly, constantly touch it up. The burn line itself is it's pretty. 
pretty crisp, but it's you know not perfectly level, not perfectly even, but you know that's no big deal. Okay, I'll continue smoking this. I'll come back somewhere in the second third. Here we are, about 40 minutes in. As you can see, it's burning unevenly again. And I attribute that likely to the tunnel that's in there. The side that's not burning is the side that the tunnel is closest to. The cigar is also getting quite warm, and I attribute that to the tunnel as well. In fact, there's a couple tunnels that have opened up and are in the process of joining together. And it's uh, got quite a bowl going on in there. I'm going to have to touch this up again. And it just went out. So we will relight. Now, with, with tunneling like this, the reason there are burn issues with tunneling and it getting hot is think of it like a chimney. You got a fire going in your fireplace. Where's most of your heat go? Right up the chimney. So that's why it's not burning properly. have all sorts of issues when you've got tunneling going on. The reason for the tunneling has to do with the bunching of the tobacco leaves on the, on the filler leaves. They're basically rolled in like straws and uh, instead of it being more like an accordion style where they're kind of, where all facets of the leaf are kind of in contact with each other. If it's rolled to more like a straw, you get the very center of it where the leaves just don't touch and all the heat just shoots right through that. And while it heats up the cigar, it doesn't actually ignite the leaves. So most of you probably understand that, but there may be some that don't. There's a lot more to it than that. That's just kind of a quick rundown. It's a tasty cigar. There are no off flavors. There are no um, just just nothing nothing bad on the taste or anything. It's just burn issues. Is all I'm having with this uh, on a you know the, the only negative thing. Not a whole lot going on with the cigar flavor wise. It's kind of one dimensional. Some spice. Look at that pepper note on the retro hail. A solid medium in body, maybe medium full, somewhere in that area. Not a whole lot going on. All right, I'll continue on. I'll come back somewhere in the final third. Just about an hour in, I did have to touch it up again. It was uh, trying to go out again. Smoke became very thin. I'm in the nub. Still pretty one dimensional. That tunnel, I think I finally managed to burn pretty much through it. Lasted through the majority of the cigar. Uh, came in um, almost immediately in the first third, and it lasted. All the way until, uh, like I said, there's a little bit left, but I think I'm just about done with that tunnel. So, pretty much the whole cigar had that tunnel. Plagued with burn issues the whole way through. 
cigar is quite warm. Not hot, it's not enough to put me off yet, but uh, warmer than I would like. So I'll end this review here saying that the Alec Bradley Nicopuro and Robusto size, one dimensional, not a whole lot of flavor characteristics, a little bit of uh, pepper on the retro hail, a little bit of spice in there. That was pretty much it. Um, as I mentioned, uh, tunneling and burn issues the whole way through. But uh, you, know, you get that from time to time. I, I couldn't say that that uh, all of these are going to have the same burn issues and that type of thing. But uh, if you're an Alec Bradley fan, then uh, head down to or check out online Milan Tobacconist in Roanoke, Virginia on uh, Jefferson Street. They're running a special for the month of September. Uh, the uh, Nika Puro uh, was one of the uh, free choices along with the Connecticut was a, another free choice. You buy two of their Alec Bradleys and then either the Nika Puro or the Connecticut uh, is free. So a good deal, good value. Uh, regular retail price on this cigar is, what did I say, $7.35. It's the regular retail on this. So I thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Catch you next time.